If you think that the shedding of human blood by those who embrace evolution ended with the Nazi death camps, think again. As Darwinism becomes more and more accepted in our culture, our young people are becoming both the perpetrators and the victims. I just started screaming and crying and telling them not to shoot me. Tuesday, April 20th, 1999. 11.19 a.m. Columbine High School, near Littleton, Colorado, just outside Denver. In a hail of gunfire, 11 students and one teacher are killed, and 24 others are wounded, before the shooters, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, both students at the school, turn their guns on themselves. It is the deadliest school shooting in U.S. history, in a decade that saw school shootings sharply increase overall. We're reaping the consequences right now in this culture of generations that have been taken through a public education system and taught a Darwinian view, taught that you can explain life by natural processes and therefore ultimately your morality is whatever you want to make it to be. That's really Darwin's legacy. Debbie Phillips' niece Rachel Scott was one of the students killed at Columbine. The killers, Eric and Dylan, badgered the kids over and over that they were killing that day. Do you believe in God? Why do you believe in God? You believe in God? Well, there, and they would kill him as if they had more power than God. Foolish that, foolishly, they thought they, they were controlling people's lives at that point. And they, they wanted that power. They wanted, to be, they wanted to play God during that whole scene. While there were presumably many factors that led to the shootings at Columbine, the notion of Darwinian evolution clearly played a major role. Indeed, the autopsy report for shooter Eric Harris revealed that on the day of the attack, which would intentionally be the last day of his life, he had chosen to wear a t-shirt emblazoned with the words, Natural Selection. Denver area high school teacher Ken Poppy. To me that would signify that if natural selection is the person's point of view, that is a fight for survival and the people who are the strongest are going to rule and on that day, I, I believe their armaments gave them the impression that they were the stronger and they had the right to deprive the, life of the lives of their students. The killers had been planning the rampage for about a year. They chose April 20th to honor the birthday of one of their heroes, Adolf Hitler, who also took many of his ideas from Darwinism. They set bombs up that never went off. Their intention to slay over 500 victims that day fell short by 485. While Columbine was the most dramatic example of such incidents, there have been more than a dozen school shootings in the United States since then. And there's no telling how many young people have been involved in serious, less publicized crimes outside of schools. Critics point to the removal of any notion of God from public schools and its replacement with Darwinism as leading America down a slope of increasing violence. And yet, it's the biblical theistic view which gives hope and significance to human beings. And in fact, after Columbine, um, they were putting, putting up tiles um, that, that the students were making, and, and one of the tiles was Jesus wept. From the Bible, it's, it does kind of grab you um, after what happened out there. No, that tile was prohibited. That tile could not be put up. Tragic, isn't it? But is it all that surprising? If you teach children that they're no more than trousered apes and that life has no purpose or meaning, then why are we shocked when they act like that? Evolutionist George de Maurier called man a fungus on the surface of one of the minor planets. Arnold Schoenberg referred to man as a hairless ape. And Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes said, quote, I see no reason for attributing to man a significant difference in kind from that which belongs to a grain of sand. Well, the fungus just got demoted. And we wonder why our young people are killing themselves and others. Millions of Americans are being lied to. It's a lie hiding as scientific fact. Could you expose the lie of evolution and reveal the truth?
To help you do that, Coral Ridge Ministries has designed an easy-to-read booklet entitled Evidence for Creation, Intelligent Answers for Open Minds by Tom DeRosa. With this booklet, you'll be equipped to give compelling answers to the most common questions about creation and evolution. Evidence for Creation, Intelligent Answers for Open Minds is yours for a gift to this ministry of any amount. And when you give, we'll also send you today's hard-hitting documentary entitled Darwin's Deadly Legacy, featuring footage not included in this broadcast. DVD includes English and Spanish tracks. We've done all the work for you. We've interviewed the experts, we've compiled the evidence, and presented it in a clear, easy-to-understand format. This video is an excellent resource for anyone you know who's unfamiliar with the little-known dark side of Darwinism and the horrific link between Hitler and evolution. To receive yours, write to Pearl Ridge Ministries, Box 40, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33302, or call 1-888-947-9009. Please call or write today. Writing in the New York Times, evolutionist Richard Dawkins penned, It is absolutely safe to say that if you meet someone who claims not to believe in evolution, that person is ignorant, stupid, or insane. Or wicked. But I'd rather not consider that. Is that true? Is evolution a fact? We've already seen the devastating consequences of the acceptance of the theory of evolution, but it's simply scientific fact and we're stuck with it at least so we're told well actually not quite so fast let's take a closer look i think on the surface you can build a scientific case for darwinism in reality though the more you examine it the more its pillars rot under scrutiny the so-called fact of evolution is not a fact at all. It, too, is a hypothesis of still looking for evidence. The missing links to me are, are missing everywhere. No evidence will ever be accepted to disprove Darwinism um, because they must believe in Darwinism. Darwin wrote a book in the public school classrooms, in the mainstream media, and in natural history museums, Darwinism is pushed everywhere, even to dogmatic degrees. Darwin theorized that all life could have originated from a common one-celled ancestor over long periods of time and that natural selection retained the random changes that were most helpful to the organism's survival. And this was the origin of all of life in all of its variety. But how accurate is the theory on closer examination? 